have the Sabbath. One more time. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. It is a uh, great day to see everybody this morning. Beautiful day. It's the end of uh, summer. Summer is ending. And as my, as my neighbor said on Sunday, as the fires were coming down, what a way to end summer. How with the fires going on uh, here in American Canyon. Um, you know, it, it, we're fortunate and we're blessed to have, um, you know, even the little things in life, such as electricity and a home, and, uh, you know, water, clothes on our back. We're fortunate to have, you know, that things weren't as worse as they could have been. Uh, I even have a work, uh, I have a coworker who was, uh, who lived in paradise when the paradise uh, fires were happening. And he was working in the hospital and he actually took people in his own vehicle and took them away from the fires in uh, paradise. And you can only imagine, you know, that the fires here that happened on Sunday, um, thank God that they weren't as worse as they could be. Uh, just funny story, on Sunday, major, uh, majority of us with the uh, children's ministry, we were in Sonoma. And when we were, we were in Sonoma, we ended kind of like around 3-ish uh, in the evening. And we were, I was coming home, and as I was driving, I see smoke uh, here in the hills. And I'm like, oh, you know, where is that coming from? I thought it was coming maybe from the other side of the hill, uh, maybe more in Sassoon or V Valley area. <laughs> But as I got closer to home, uh, I see the fire, and the fire is right here in our own front yard. And so I get home, my mom and dad is home, and I go into my parents' room and I say, hey, do you know that there's a fire outside? And the room is right in front of our house and you, it's facing towards the hills. And my mom said, what? I said, yeah, look outside. The whole thing is, up on, is you know, on fire, and it's, headed, it's, the hill, it's coming down the hill towards our house. And so we got home and the kids were kind of afraid. We started packing things and, uh, you know, we said, you know what, let's, let's pray. And so we got on our knees and we prayed. And amazing, amazingly that the fires, as it was coming down, the winds shifted. And now the fire started to direct itself towards this way. Amen. And I don't know if you know this, but my sister-in-law, Cheryl's house is that way. I didn't pray for that. I didn't pray that the fire would go towards her house, but we prayed that the fires would just stop. But for some reason, it was heading towards her house. That way. But praise God that the fires didn't, it, it stopped right there at the street and it didn't cross over to our homes. And praise God that our homes are well. Uh, let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, God, so much uh, for this day, Father, that you have set aside uh, for a holy day, for a holy use and a holy convocation, dear Lord. And we ask you, Lord, Father, bless us in a special way. May you prepare our minds and our hearts, Lord, to receive your message this morning. I ask you, Lord, Father, that you will speak through me, Father. May your words be heard by your people, Father. May you speak to their hearts and their minds, and may you uh, reach them, Father. May you prick up their hearts, Father, and may you uh, change them. I pray, Father, that uh, they will hear your voice and not mine. Lord, I thank you, God, for this opportunity to serve you, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So do you know that um, song, it's a children's song. Uh, it goes, I am a C, singly, I am a C, I am a C-H. I am a C H R I S T I A N, and I have C H R I S T in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L L Y. All right. So you know that song. I am a Christian, right? I am a Christian, and I have Christ in my heart, and I will live eternally because I have Him in my heart. You know, it's very interesting because. The word Christian, some history and some background of the word Christian is not just, a Christian is not a denomination, but more of a people. And it says this, that the disciples were told 
and they were first called Christians at Antioch, somewhere around 43 AD. And they were known to each other before that. Uh, they were calling each other brethren. They were known as disciples. They were known as believers and saints. And the name Christian, where it appears in the New Testament, it only appears three times. First time in Acts 11, 26. And then you find it another time in Acts. And then you also find it in the book of 1 Peter. And that is the only three times that you see the word Christian in the Bible. And so in the New Testament, it appears that it is used almost disrespectfully. You know, you could not have been applied by the early disciples to themselves. They didn't call themselves Christians. But it was imposed upon them by the Gentile world. There is no reason to suppose that the name Christian of itself was intended as a term offensive or abusive, though it would naturally be used with contempt. So the word Christian, it is just a name that the people of Antioch used to call people who follow Christ. Are you a follower of Christ? Do you follow Jesus Christ? If you are a follower of Christ, then you are a Christian. But then the thing about today is a lot of us and a lot of people today, they say they are Christians, but they don't act like Christians. And that is the problem. That is a bigger problem than just having the name Christian. And so, turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Say amen when you get there, please. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. And say amen when you get there. Amen. All right, I hear a couple of Bibles turning. Second Corinthians 13, verse 5. Everyone there? All right, the Bible says, examine who? Yourself. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. What does it say next? Test, you. Test yourself. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. So the question I want to ask today, and I hope, does everyone have uh, the little paper that I passed out to you? Um, and we're going to go through this. And if you notice the title, and the um, heading of the little paper says, am, am I really a Christian checklist? And it's a, I'm giving you a resource to check yourself if you are a true follower, a real Christian, a, someone who really follows the Lord. And so we'll go through that today and see, and I hope it is a blessing to you. And so, are you, a, are you really a Christian? Or are you just a Christian by name? You know, at times we can be so nearsighted that if we just step back and examine our lives, we can see things that we need to improve. And today, we have that simple checklist that I passed out to you, and we can use it as a resource uh, to stay on track and stay on target and to be a, a consistent servant of the Lord. Is that your prayer today? Amen. All right. And so, uh, you can just follow along with me uh, on your checklist. And I'm, those are exact verses that I'll be going through today. So, if I'm going too fast, you'll know where to find the verses. So, first question. What do I love more? Am I really question? What do I love more? Do I love the world or do I love God more? The Bible tells us in 1 John 2, 15 and 16, the Bible says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. You know, the things of the world are those things that give you a certain feeling or it gives you pleasure. And, and satisfaction. You know, the, the way that you can truly measure do I love the world or do I love God is by how you spend your time. You know, just examine how do I spend my time each day? Do I spend my time with God or do I spend it doing other things and not even thinking about God? 
So, our first question. What do I love more, the world or God? You know, being a Christian, we are to love God more, more than the world. His commandment says that you shall have no other God before me. You should put God first and as your first priority, each and every day, every second. Amen? Amen. And it goes on to say in verse 17, And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? That those who do the will of God abides forever. I want you to know that the will of God is simply keeping His commandments. When God tells you to do something and you keep it, you are doing the will of God. So going on to our next question, it says, Does sin reign or does sin control my life? Romans 6.12, the Bible says, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. Romans 3.23, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is nobody in this world except for Jesus that has not sinned. And, you know, the really the critical thing to think about is when we sin, what am I going to do about it? The next steps that you take after that really steers which direction you're going in. You know, there are many people in the world that don't know what to do about sin. And there's a lot of people that are living, and they know that they're living in sin, but they choose not to do anything about it. But Jesus has overcome sin, and He will give you the strength. He'll give you the power. He'll give you the wisdom. He'll give you everything you need to overcome. If we just come to Him. No, you don't have to be perfect to come to Him. Just come as you are. Get on your knees and pray, and He will... He will help you. And now, going on, our next question. Do I love my neighbor? Being a Christian, the Bible tells us, John 13, verse 35, By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one another. When you're showing love to your neighbor and to your brothers and sisters, you know, it is a true uh, testament of how where your heart is. And if you are a follower of Christ, your heart is going to, you're going to see people just as Jesus saw people. You are going to see them with a, a different view. You don't see them just as they are, but you can see what God can do through them. And so, do I love my neighbor? And the Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 20 and 21, If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Amen. You know, it's funny because the people that you hurt the most are the people that you love the most. Your family members and your brothers and sisters, those are the people that we like to hurt the most and to kind of... Uh, you know, argue with and fight with. The people closest to us, we do that to them. But the people who are kind of far off from us, our friends and, uh, you know, other people that are not as close as our family is, we, we treat them better than we do to our family members. Strange what we do as human beings. It's, back, it's kind of backwards. And so, we remember the, the story that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan. You can find it in Luke chapter 10. And how somebody asked, oh, who is my name? And he tells them this story about the Good Samaritan. And it's simply a story of a person doing good deeds for someone who was not even, uh, you know, who was close to him or was of the same religion. It was somebody who, who, who saw somebody in trouble and decided, hey, I'm going to help lift the burdens of my brother. And also, so loving our neighbor, the inspiration tells us that Christ's method alone will give us true success in reaching people. And Christ's method is simply showing Christ's love to others. Our next question, am I grieved by sin? Romans 7.13, the Bible tells us, 
Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not, but sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sin. Mm -hmm. An easier version says this, Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not, but sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin through the commandment might be, become exceedingly sinful. You know, when we fall to sin, are you truly hurt by it? Are you, do you really feel convicted when, when sin happens in your life? When you do something bad, when you disobey God, do you truly feel convicted? Inspiration tells us that, you know, until we see how sinful sin really is, we're not going to repent of our sins. You know, we can be in a great danger if we're not feeling saddened about sin. Uh, we may, it may get to a dangerous point where we may be grieving away the Holy Spirit who is convicting us of those things. You know, there was a story of a mother and a son. They were in Florida, they were on the beach, and have you ever seen those big swan inflatables that you can put in the water and you can ride on top of it? Uh, so both of them, they were on top of this inflatable swan, the giant inflatable swan, and they're riding on it, and the current starts to get very strong, and the mother was trying to paddle her way back to shore, but the, the, the current was so strong that she started to just drift away, and she started to drift away more and more and more until she got to, she was like in the Gulf of Mexico. And they had to call 911 and they had to send out uh, boats to retrieve them to come back. But brothers and sisters, you know, drifting off. When we fall asleep to our sins and we start to drift off, it can become very dangerous. So our next question, where is my treasure? God has blessed you and I with great gifts, many gifts, and one gift that God has blessed you and I with is money. How do you handle your money? Are you handling it the way that God wants you to handle it? The Bible tells us this in Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, it's an easy thing to see how, where do you lie your treasure. All you have to do, log into your bank account, look at your transactions, and see where you're spending your money. And you'll, see, you'll realize where your treasure, where you're laying your treasure. Amen. God is telling you that you should be investing in heavenly things. That's right. yeah, and I want you to know that the only thing that you're really going to take to heaven is your character. And that is the greatest thing that you should be uh, investing in. And so, where do you lay your treasure? Next question. Am I bearing good fruit? The Bible tells us in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I am him bears much fruit. For without me, speaking of Jesus, without Jesus, you can do nothing. Galatians 5, 22, verse and 23, the Bible tells us this. Here are the fruits that will be seen in a believer's life when they walk in the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All these things are the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is none other than the character of Jesus Himself. And so, when you give your life to the Lord and you follow Him, these characteristics, characteristics are going to be the fruit that grows in your life also. You're going to uh, start to produce these same fruits. You know, if you're not growing fruit, you need to ask yourself, why? Why am I not growing any of these fruits? Why aren't these characteristics not producing in my life? And a simple solution is, all you have to do is think about how do fruits grow? What do you need? What are the things that you need and how do the fruits grow? Literally. All you need really to plant, you need soil, you need seeds, 
You need some water, and you need some sunlight. The Bible tells us that the soil, the soil is like your heart. Some of us have stony hearts, where, our, where the seed is the Word of God. And when the Word of God is now planted into our hearts in a, a soft and uh, uh, place where the seed will germinate and grow, you know, we need to break up that soil so it will be nice and soft to receive the, the seed. And the Bible tells us that the water is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts us, the one who, who teaches us and guides us. And then we need the sun, the light, the Word of God which directs our paths. And so if you're not bearing fruit, think about just how you plant, how you plant and grow fruit, literally. And so, am I bearing fruit, good fruit? Next question. Do I deny Christ or proclaim Him? The Bible tells us in Luke 12, verse 8 and 9, Whoever confesses me before men, him the Son of Man also will I confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before angels of God. You know, if you were, if you were brought before a court, for being a Christian, would they have enough evidence to convict you of being a Christian? You know, think about your life. Do you, would, would you say that there is enough evidence in this world to say that you are a Christian? Or do you say you're a Christian and, you know, the things that you do are, are, are not really going to say that you are a real follower of the Lord? And so think about that. Do I deny Christ or do I proclaim Him? Do I lift His name up or do I say I'm a Christian and I, I do other things? Amen. Our next question. Am I spending regular time in Bible study and prayer? The Bible says in Jeremiah 15, 16, Your words were found and I ate them. Your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I love what Job, Job says in Job 23, verse 12. He says, I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Wow. It is amazing. Job says, you know what? I esteem God's word even more than food. You know, I, I know in the Filipino culture, food is a big thing. And for somebody to say, wow, I love the word of God more than food. It's like wow, you are you are you you're, you're you're saying something, you know you're you're saying something really testing. You love food, you love the word of God more than food. Wow, you know, are you cutting the communication off with God? God, the inspiration tells us that when you read the word of God, it is as if you're hearing the audible voice of God. So when you study your Bibles and when you read Scripture, it's as if you're hearing God's voice right to your own ears. Amen. So are you neglecting that time in Bible study and prayer? You know, we need to, we need to set aside time, whether it's in the morning, in the evening, whether the little time that you have, find the time to spend with the Lord in prayer and in studying the Word. And so, our next question. Do I long to worship and fellowship with others? It's, it's amazing because God has given us a day to come together. He calls it a holy convocation, a, a, a holy day to come together. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, 24, and 25, Let us consider one, one another in, out, in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking and assembling ourselves together, as is the manner of some. But extorting one another, uh, exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. You know, if we love the Lord, we are going to long to be in an atmosphere where like-minded believers who are praising and lifting up God, you're gonna you're gonna desire to be in that type of environment. Do you desire that? Do you do you long to come to church, sing praises? 
You don't even have instruments, but you just want to lift up your voice, and you can't even sing. But you still sing your heart out to, to the Lord. Amen. And He says, you know what? I know your heart, and I know you're doing your best. Even though you don't sound good, I don't care. <laughs> you know, long to, to fellowship with others and to, to lift up God. And our last question, do I have peace? You know, just as we're on this topic, to plug in our seminar, you know, there are many people who are stressed in this world, who, are, who don't have the peace that passes all understanding. And if they were looking for that, invite them to the seminar next week and tell them about it. The Bible tells us in John 14, verse 27, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Philippians 4, 9, the Bible tells us, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. When you have the Word of God in your heart, when you study the Word of God, when you have Jesus in your heart, there is a, a peace that passes all understanding. When there's troubles, when there's fires coming towards your, your house, and it, it, it is right across the street and going to burn down your house, and you still have the peace, other people are going to wonder, wow, where is he getting that from? And a great opportunity to share the Savior with them. And as I close, the Bible tells us, let's go to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. It is a promise for you and I as we continue our walk with the Lord. The Bible tells us in Philippians 1, verse 6. Is everyone there? Say amen. amen. The Bible tells us, and I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. It is a promise for you and I that God will finish the work that He has started until Jesus comes again. Isn't that a beautiful promise? That is a promise that you can claim every day until Jesus returns. So as I close, a simple appeal. You know, if you feel as if, you know what, there are some things in my life I need to change, and I call myself a Christian, but you know what? As I study God's Word, I see the little defects where I need to change. The little things that God is pricking at my heart to say, you know what? I need to stop doing this. You know, if that is on your heart today, simply pray as I'm praying and ask God, help me in my walk, Lord, and claim the promise that He will finish, that you will finish the work in me. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, so much. We thank you, God, so much for your word, Father, for your instructions, Father, for guidance in this world, Father, for the world is, is filled with darkness, Father, but your word is light, and you have given it to us, Father, that we may follow, that we may follow it, Father, and that we may uh, see exactly where to go. And we ask you, Holy Father, Please continue just to bless us, Father. Continue to finish the work that you have started in us. Continue to help us in our struggles, Father. And help us turn to you, Father. For you said that you will fight for us. And that uh, we do not even need to lift a finger, Father. For it is a spiritual battle, Father. And that you have overcome sin. And that you will give us the strength to overcome it also. Lord, we thank you, God, for all your blessings. And I ask you, Lord... Uh, help us continue to keep this day holy. Help us to um, uh, uh, take what you have given us today, Father, and truly just to apply it to our lives, Father. Lord, we thank you, God, for all your blessings. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.